One Zambia, One Nation. Good evening and welcome to the main news. I'm Engotu Himanje. Stories making headlines. President Edgar Lungu has appointed and sworn in former Zambia National Farmers Union Executive Director Songo Wayo Ziambo as Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture. The Japanese International Cooperation Agency, JICA, plans to spend 60 million United States dollars to support small scale farmers in Zambia. The body of former Vice President Lupando Mwape, who died in South Africa, has been repatriated to Zambia. And Nkana and Zasco United Football Clubs will tomorrow revive their rivalry when the lock horns in the season opening Charity Shield Cup at Kitwe's Arthur Davis Stadium. And now the news in detail. President Edgar Lungu has appointed and sworn in Zambia National Farm former Zambia National Farmers Union Executive Director Songowayo Ziambo as Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture. The President has since urged Mr. Ziambo to work closely with the key players in the agriculture sector. Speaking at State House today when he swore in Mr. Ziambo, President Lungu has urged the new Permanent Secretary not to work only with technocrats in the ministry but interact more with all farmers and agro-dealers. Taking oath of office as he takes up his new appointment, former Zambian National Farmers Union Executive Director Songowayo Ziambo has been sworn in as the new Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture. President Edgar Lungu is confident that Mr. Ziambo will handle challenges in the Ministry of Agriculture owing to his vast experience in the agriculture sector. He will based in agricultural issues uh, having worked for the International Farmers Union for 17 years as an extension officer, national coordinator, deputy director, and for the last 10 years as the CEO. I think for me that's a very good track record. I had to search for one like you, and I'm glad I found you. You therefore command a clear practical understanding of the entire value chain of the agricultural sector in Zambia and the enormous challenges that affect us. Speaking after the swearing ceremony, the newly appointed permanent secretary echoed the president's sentiments on the need to work with various stakeholders in the agriculture sector. You see, agriculture is very wide and uh, is also very sensitive because it affects different stakeholders differently. We have different players, we have farmers, we have the agribusiness, uh, we have the consumers themselves. Later. President Lungo held a meeting with Trade King Zambia Management, who called on him at State House. The team briefed the president on the company's expansion plans and that they are seeking partnership in setting up the Kafiwa Iron and Steel Multifacility Economic Zones. Special assistant to the president for press and public relations, Amos Janda said the president has given Trade King Zambia his full support and has accepted their invitation to tour their facilities. And they've briefed him on a wide range of their production, ranging from uh, consumables such as soaps, sweets, biscuits, steel, and, and also is encouraged by their expansionary plans where they are partnering with HCCM IH in the new production line that they will be setting up in the Mount Facility Zone, uh, 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 in Lusaka, the South Mount Facility Zone. He has given a full support to the plans and ambitions of Trade Kings to expand and build what they are announcing to be uh, probably the biggest manufacturing plant uh, uh, in South Africa. Sharon Kunda, ZNBC News, in Lusaka. Government has released 12.7 million to the Food Reserve Agency FRA to pay the remaining farmers in Isoka district. Presidential Affairs Minister Freedom Sikazwe says government understands that farming is time bound and the money has been released to enable farmers to plan for the next farming season. Zanis has more in the following report. Zambia's rural majority depends on farming. That is why government attaches great importance on agriculture. This is the reason Presidential Affairs Minister Freedom Skazwe is in Isoka district of Mchinga province to address the payments of farmers who sold their produce to FRA last year and were not yet paid. And on delayed distribution of fertilizer under farmer support input program, FISIP issue, the minister states. Agriculture is time bound. March, April, 
fertilizer will be useless to everyone. So we'd rather, if there are any uh, issues, we give the farmers the inputs, then we, we remain talking to the input dealers, the, the agro dealers, ourselves. Let the problem remain between the government and the agro dealers. And Chief Kafumbi of the Namanga speaking people has appealed to government to scrap off the agro dealer system. Meanwhile, Muchinga Province Minister Malozo Sichone, who is also member of parliament for Isoka, has disclosed that government has released 12.7 million kwacha to pay out farmers in Isoka district. Sure that the bank starts to give farmers to them. Nothing like, no, we want to document this, that they are buying time. Fred Piri, the next news, Isoka. The Japanese International Cooperation Agency, JICA, plans to spend 60 million United States dollars to support small-scale farmers in Zambia. JICA project manager Takeo Ishizuka says the agency is committed to supporting farmers who are unable to produce huge yields due to limited funds. He said this in an interview with ZNBC News. Meanwhile, one of the beneficiaries, Bristol Nachobo, said the agency has helped him to expand his farming venture and is able to support his family. Information and Broadcasting Services Minister Dora Silia says she's concerned with many challenges media, ha media houses in the country are facing in an effort to communicate effectively to the public. Ms. Silia said government is aware of challenges that media houses such as the Zambia News and Information Services, ZANIS, and many others are facing at district level. ZANIS reports that Ms. Silia was speaking today uh, at Petauke Central Constituency Office when she handed over bicycles to some Patriotic Front ward officials. The Minister of Information said her office is engaging the Minister of Finance to provide funds for equipping media houses with various broadcasting tools so that they are able to effecti effectively report issues on the ground. And Ms. Ilia said she will work well with newly appointed Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Permanent Secretary Chanda Kasolo in ensuring effective communication in the country. Now, United Party for National Development, UPND Kabompo Member of Parliament, Ambrose Lufuma, has commended government for development projects being implemented in Kabompo District. Mr. Lufuma said this when he and Housing and Infrastructure Minister Ronald Chutotela inspected gullies which are being worked on on the Soloisi Kabompo Road. Here is a report. These gullies were slowly hampering the Soloisi Kabompo Road, causing a danger for motorists. But government through the Road Development Agency, RDA, is on site to respond to the problem. This has impressed the area member of parliament, uh, Ambrose Lufuma. Um, the people of Kabompo, and definitely from Kabompo beyond uh, Zambezi Chavuma, would have been cut off uh, had this uh, emergency program and the project, which has been facilitated by my good friend here, Honorable Chitotela, not been done. It, it was urgent and uh, I'm glad that uh, the government did what it's supposed to do. Housing and Infrastructure Development Minister Ronald Chitotela has assured the people here of total support from government. We recognize that the PF government under President Lungu is a working government and we, we respond to the needs of the people because regardless of where people are, they are Zambians. They deserve to be saved by the, the government and President Lungu believes in service that which does not leave anyone behind. The minister also paid a courtesy call on the Chavuma Valley Royal Establishment gift in Ambao. ZNBC News, Chavuma. Ministry of Information and Broadcasting Services Permanent Secretary Chan Dakasolo says government will regulate the media if media institutions will fail to come up with a self-regulatory body. Mr. Casolo says he is a firm believer in self-regulation and would want the media to adopt the same. He said this during a media briefing at his office. Meanwhile, Mr. Casolo has thanked outgoing Permanent Secretary Godfrey Malama for the hard work he exhibited during the time he served at the ministry. I am a great believer in consultation before action. We must consult each other fully. There is the issue of uh, 
self-regulation. Uh, we will push that. You guys must self-regulate. I am a great believer in that. If you can't, then we will have to put regulation in place as government. Because what we can't allow is irresponsible journalism and irresponsible publication of falsehoods. And we can't allow breaking the law by insulting the head of state. The head of state is the head of the nation. Head of state doesn't mean he's the head of a political party or organization. No, he heads the Zambian nation. The body of former Vice President Lupando Mwape, who died in South Africa, has been repatriated to Zambia. Mr. Mwape has been praised by various officials who worked with him. Details in the following report by Hanok Kasama. It was a somber moment as mourners from various walks of life witnessed the repatriation of former Vice President Lupando Mwape's body from South Africa, where he died. The Chartered South African plane carrying the body of former Vice President touched down at Kenneth Cowan International Airport at 15 hours. The body was then taken from Zambia Air Force South Base to lie in state. Mr. Mwape had been praised by various officials who worked with him. He was a man who was good to work with. You had no issues with him. He was straightforward. He minded his business and he did it well. Exceedingly sad. Not to lose a leader who served this country selflessly and diligently. First of all, it's a very sad development. We have lost a leader, we have lost a nationalist. As you have said, I was privileged to work with him as a senior private secretary, basically his confidante. He was always smiling and bore no grudge on anybody at all. Mr. Mwape, who died in South Africa on Monday, where he was receiving specialist treatment, served as Zambia's vice president from 2004 to 2006 under late third Republican president, Levi Mwanawasa. Hanok Kasama, NBC News, in Lusaka. You're watching the main news on ZNBC TV One. Just now we take a commercial break and we'll have more news after that. Stay with us. We'll continue with the news. Minister of Health Chitalu Chilufia has called on church borders to partner, to partner with the ministry in promoting health messages to improve the lives of Zambians. Dr. Chilufia says the church should help their members know their health status because it is the only way to have a longer life. And Church's Health Association of Zambia Executive Director Ali Sichinga has commended the health minister on the action he took to dissolve the Health Practitioners Council of Zambia board. Ms. Sichinga said this when she called on Dr. Chilufia at his office today. The new drug we introduced just reduces the viral load in two weeks, reduces it to undetectable levels in another two weeks. And once you attain that kind of suppression, there's no transmission to a partner or transmission from mother to child. So that is a game changer and we will reduce new infections, we will remove new infections. And, uh, but this message needs to reach the public. And, and uh, malaria elimination, very simple methods of the public. And even just to people who have walked to the office for mission health facilities from all over Zambia, calling and uh, asking me to communicate to the Honorable Minister for Health for his action on HPCZ. For the, for the church hospitals, they consider this a prayer answer and they wanted me to communicate to the Minister of Health. Health experts say alcohol abuse has been on the increase in Zambia in the past three years. Chinama Hills College Hospital psychiatrist Denita Besa says the institution has seen an increase in cases related to alcohol abuse. And University Teaching Hospital pathologist Aaron Shibemba says alcohol-related deaths are also on the increase. Here is a report. 
The young people's population is now threatened by alcohol abuse. This story makes a sad reading, especially that the youthful and productive segment of the population is the one at risk. Chinama Hills College Hospital is now worried as its statistics indicate an increase in cases of alcohol abuse among the young. Last year alone, hospital psychiatrist Nita Besa says 1,533 of the 3,576 patients attended to were on reasons of alcohol abuse. I think the unfortunate thing is uh, alcohol-related cases are actually the top 10 causes of uh, health-seeking behavior at uh, Chinama. So alcohol accounts for the top 10 admissions and for the, even the top 10 OPD cases that we see. So this is a trend that has been going on the past few years. But I think what's even uh, more concerning is when you look at our statistics, like from 2016 up to date, the percentage of uh, persons coming here with alcohol-related cases have increased. Health experts are warning that these cases of alcohol abuse are leading to premature deaths among the young people. Of late, we've been seeing an increase in um, deaths attributed to alcohol use and uh, in uh, technical terms it's alcohol abuse so we have seen an increase especially in young men and um, uh, we see this even when we conduct postmortems at the university teaching hospital mortuary those concerned also say this revelation is not good for a developing country like zambia but it calls for concerted efforts delfista lungu TV2 News in Lusaka. Lusaka Province Minister Boman Lusambo has directed Chongwe District Commissioner Freza Musonda to work closely with the Soli Royal Establishment and the Ministry of Higher Education to secure the title deed for Chalimbana University. Ruben Chomba reports that Mr. Lusambo was speaking to journalists when he toured Chalimbana University in Chongwe District. Lusaka Province Minister Boma Lusambo has toured Chalimbana University in Chongwe District to appreciate the challenge that the university is facing. Mr. Lusambo took time to check on the infrastructure under construction. The minister was surprised to learn that in spite of sitting on a 237 hectares piece of land, the university has no title deed. Mr. Lusambo has since directed Chongwe District Commissioner Fraser Musonda to work closely with the Soli Roy establishment to secure the title deed of the institution. You just have to take it on your, yourself as District Commissioner, help um, the Chalimbana University. If you feel we can come in and uh, assist where you, you feel that uh, here you can't uh, pass, I think we are ready to, uh, we are ready to help. Okay, you have heard that uh, there are other partners who want to come and uh, work with them. And Mr. Sambo further aids the university authorities to complete the construction works of 10 staff houses within a month. Uh, we need to accommodate our own staff here and we have these houses almost complete. Yes. And the president I think will be very annoyed because uh, it's very little uh, the money which we need to complete these houses. Geoffrey Tambrokani is Chalimbana University Deputy Vice Chancellor. Our organizations uh, have come here to try to assist us, but they want title, mm. and we don't have it. Ruben Chomba, ZNBC News, Chongwe District. Now, Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation ZNBC Director General Richard Mwanza says the national broadcaster has an important duty to ensure the nation has adequate information on nutrition. Mr. Mwanza said this when he called on National Food and Nutrition Commission Acting Executive Director Mosonda Mofu and his team in Lusaka today. Details in this report. A good nutrition is essential for a healthy and active life. And this has an indirect impact on social and economic development of the country. It is with this background that the National Food and Nutrition Commission of Zambia is implementing the Scaling Up Nutrition Program among other interventions. And one of the ways to reach a diverse society is through the national broadcaster ZNBC. ZNBC Director General Richard Mwanza has called on Acting Executive Director Musonda Mofu at his office to strengthen so the partnership. One of your key responsibilities is to continuously assess the extent of malnutrition among communities in the country. And I'm sure after the assessment you come up with information which requires dissemination. 
We at ZNBC therefore take these issues very seriously. And Mr. Mofu says he is ready to work with the national broadcaster to raise awareness on the importance of good nutrition. There is a platform uh, called the, the Special Committee of Permanent Secretaries on Nutrition and every time we are asked what are you doing to disseminate information to the population. We have a meeting next week and so your coming is actually to resolve that important <laughs> question because then uh, we will be able to report that we have started the discussion. Later Mr. Mwanza visited Classic on Roofing Steel's company. Here, Mr. Mwanza interacted with the managing director, Etambuyu Katota, ZNBC News, Lusaka. We break for more commercials, and after the commercials, we have business news. Stay with us. In our business segment news tonight, Livingston Tourism Association Vice Chairperson Hilary Kashempa says many stakeholders in the tourism industry are optimistic of better representation and improved standards in the sector. Join us for details after this message. Livingston Tourism Association Vice Chairperson Hilary Kashempa has told ZNBC News in an interview that many stakeholders in the tourism industry are optimistic of better representation and improved standards in the, in the sector. Angela Limoanya reports. Government uh, of PF under the able leadership of His Excellency Mr. Edgar Chagwalungu indeed is desirous that uh, Livingstone still remains as a tourist capital. To that effect, there are serious uh, movements to bring the Zambia Tourism Agents in Livingstone. News that has elated many players in the tourism industry in Livingstone who have been calling for better representation and a stronger voice to improve the sector. The local representation, the Livingstone Tourism Association, which says has played its part over the years, is happy that the Zambia Tourism Agency ZTA offices will now have heavy presence in the tourist capital. Livingston being the tourist capital as well and having the a heavy presence of the ZTA uh, office uh, in, in Livingston really will be a plus on our side. Uh, in many ways it will actually improve also on the turnaround in terms of uh, communication, the turnaround in terms of getting the real facts on the a turnaround time actually in terms of getting the roof facts on the ground and it will also help the entire ZTA really get in touch with the actual reality with what's happening on the ground. LTA Vice Chairperson Hilary Kashempa says even though the current office is doing its best, much more needs to be done to improve the sector. Many stakeholders in the tourism sector have been calling for improved marketing of local products, not only in the tourist capital Livingstone but countrywide. Angela Limonia, ZNBC News in Livingstone. The Bank of Zambia has urged financial institutions in the country to expand financial services to rural areas because that is where the majority Zambians are based. Bose Assistant Director Examinations and Surveillance Mbinga Kafonya said this during a media breakfast in Lusaka today. And Mr. Kafonya has also held Medim Zambia Limited for its efforts aimed at enhancing financial inclusion of smallholder farmers. Meanwhile, Chief Literator of the Lenja people has expressed happiness that Parcel Cert has helped his subjects to formally define land boundaries. That's it for business segment this evening. We'll be back with more of that next week at the same time. Foreign Affairs Minister Joe Malangi says government will continue motivating and taking care of civil servants to enhance service delivery. Mr. Malangi, who is also a Kwacha Member of Parliament, was speaking in Kitwe after distributing food hampers and cash to various schools, clinics and police stations in his constituency. Musenge Mulimba has details. He is in his constituency to motivate civil servants. Schools, clinics and police stations were the latest beneficiaries. Kwacha Area Member of Parliament, Joe Malangi, gave out food and cash worth over 500,000 kwacha. Mr. Malangi visited Riverside Police Station and various schools and clinics where he addressed members of staff. At Riverside Police Station, the MP heard some of the problems being faced by the station. He later visited various schools and handed over milli meal and containers of cooking oil to teachers. Yeah, they, uh principal um, 
platform where we have to make human capital in the community. Yes, sir. So we thought uh, we should extend the Christmas, Christmas uh, gifts that are going to other civil servants in the clinics and uh, hospitals in the community. Mm -hmm. So it's from that premise that we thought uh, we should extend at least a bag of milk and five liters of quick milk for each one of your teachers. He donated 20,000 kwacha to Mitando and Lulamba Secondary Schools to help with the completion of various projects, while Bulangililo received 10,000 kwacha. The specs they will do you in the That's 10,000 kwacha deposit. Kwacha, Valleview, and the Puskilo Secondary School and Kwacha Clinic also benefited. Mr. Malanji also gave 1,000 bags of millimil to PF branch members. But he had a timely message for the branch members. We must see the structures working in the constituency. Dispensation of information here, government, in the more structures. Musenge Mulimba for ZNBC News in Kitwe. First Lady Esther Lungu has commended the AIDS Health Foundation for supplementing government's efforts in health care delivery. Mrs. Lungu said this when she held a bilateral meeting with Kelvin Sos, who is board member of the AIDS Health Foundation in Los Angeles, USA. She observed that the organization's efforts in health care service has made a huge impact in supporting government's vision of taking health care delivery to the people. Meanwhile, AHF board member Reverend Sos said his organization is more than ready to expand its efforts in supporting various initiatives aimed at strengthening health care systems in Zambia. AHF donated a huge consignment of uh, sanitary parts to our girls right there at one of the schools yeah. and again the same year, 2017, I think in September, mm -hmm. yes, they offered to donate more of the sanitary pads and I invited them to State House where they did the donation. Mm -hmm. It was a huge donation. A lot of girls have benefited, especially those in the rural areas because I'm mostly focusing on the rural mm -hmm. population, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I joined the, the AHF board was because one, you know, uh, it, it deals with a very, very challenging, you know, uh, issue that in so many ways has um, uh, adversely affected South Africa and so many other sub-Saharan countries, one. And two, um, um, because, you know, it benefits, you know, the organization benefits so many uh, different African countries, as well as, you know, uh, uh, black people everywhere, including here in the Caribbean, you know, and, and elsewhere. Coming up next is sports, but just now we break for a last batch of commercials. Don't go away. It's now time for sports. My name is uh, Robert Mwanza. In our segment uh, tonight, uh, the Confederations of African Handball has given Zambia Handball Association rights to host the 2019 Africa Games Handball Qualifiers. Join us for details after this message. Nkana and Zesco United Football Clubs will tomorrow revive their rivalry when they lock horns in the season opening charity shield uh, at Kitwe's Arthur Davis Stadium. This will be the two sides' third successive final meeting in the same competition since its inception. And speaking at a pre-match media briefing in Kitwe today, Zesco United Football Club assistant coach Alfred Lupia said his side will feature a strong squad against Inkana. And Inkana player coach Joseph Msonda described the charity shield as a crucial match, saying Zesco United is an experienced side. At the same occasion, former Chipolo Polo midfielder Chisambalungu, who is applying his trade at Inkana, said the match is the biggest game of 2019. Meanwhile, the Football Association of Zambia, FAS, has announced that MTN are the 2019 Charity Shield sponsors. FAS spokesperson Desmond Katongo said the commitment shown by MTN Zambia is testimony of the company's support towards lifting the standards of the game in the country. To show further commitment the most popular sport in Zambia by contributing 
125,000 kwacha. We are happy to be associated with the cause of donating all the proceeds from this march to charity as part of our corporate uh, social responsibility program. Our participation in Zambian football is a choice made many years ago. Uh, they've got uh, good quality players, they play, they've got experience, they play with Continental, so the game tomorrow I think it's going to be tough and uh, uh, both teams, I, I know, we prepared well and uh, I think the, the, the supporters, they are going to enjoy to watch the game. So if we break each other's legs then we are killing ourselves. We just need to give the people who pay a good game, fair play. That also goes to the match officials. We just need fair play. We are in very difficult assignments. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. The Confederation of African Handball has given Zambia Handball Association rights to host the 2019 All Africa Games Handball Qualifiers. And after the news, as NBC TV1 will cross over to Mulungushi International Conference Centre for the live coverage of the 2018 Sports Awards. That's the end of the news. That's the news at 19. We'll be back with the summary at 22 hours. See you then.